Hello everyone and welcome back to this lecture series on powder metallurgy. So far uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, different uh, methods of uh, powder fabrication and in the uh, last couple of classes uh, we have talked about uh, the process of atomization for making metal powders and if you uh, remember in the previous class we talked about uh, the details of uh, the water atomization process. So, we will uh, continue on this atomization and we will see in today's class uh, what are the other uh, atomization techniques which are available for making metal powders. So, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, another atomization process which is uh, centrifugal atomization. So, what we have seen so far uh, for atomizing a molten metal stream, uh, all you need is a mechanical force uh, which can induce uh, instabilities in the molten stream of metal and break it down into uh, finer droplets. Okay. So, we have seen that a gas jet or a water jet can be used for that purpose to provide that impact and break down the molten metal stream. Now, in case of uh, centrifugal atomization as the name itself suggests, in this case uh, the force which is used to do that to serve that purpose of uh, breaking down or inducing those instabilities on the molten metal stream is the centrifugal force, okay, which is nothing but a mechanical force that comes from rotation. Right. So, as you can see uh, from this uh, particular diagram schematic here that uh, you have this uh, metal uh, which is being melted and also rotated at the same time at a particular uh, velocity at a particular uh, rotational speed and as it rotates and melts uh, due to this uh, centrifugal force, uh, you know, uh, there is a liquid film uh, which develops on the surface and which is quite unstable and finally, it breaks down into uh, these finer droplets, right. So, we will talk about this in little more detail uh, in, a, in a short while from now, right. So, that's, that is uh, the, the, the process and as far as the, the melting is uh, concerned that can be done by either uh, you know electric arc or, or by using a plasma or even laser can be used to uh, melt that uh, uh, metal uh, which has to be formed into powder.
And one more thing uh, that I should mention over here is the fact that uh, this process came into being, the process of uh, centrifugal atomization uh, came into use uh, primarily because of the fact or because of the need to uh, control the particle size and to handle a difficult to melt or difficult to process metals. like those uh, you know reactive metals or those refractory metals having very high melting point, uh, those kind of materials which are difficult to uh, process right. And to uh, exercise a better control uh, over the particle size, uh, this uh, process uh, came into being because uh, controlling uh, the particle size and the other aspects you know or to handle a, a certain type of metal. Uh, that may be difficult in the other other atomization processes that uh, we have talked about so far. Okay, so centrifugal uh, atomization is a process uh, which which can uh, have a better control on the particle size and it can also handle uh, difficult to process metals. Okay, now uh, talking about uh, this again as to how uh, this whole uh, process happens. Uh, or the mechanism uh, which is involved here. So, as uh, you can see uh, the stock or the material you know which is uh, being melted uh, that, that can be in the form of a rod for example, <coughs> which is uh, rotated uh, at a particular uh, rpm at a particular rotation speed and that generates the uh, centrifugal force. right? And as that happens, as the centrifugal force is generated or as the centrifugal force acts on this uh, uh, melting uh, rod, a, a, a liquid film uh, develops on the surface as you could see over here. Okay. And because of this uh, mechanical force, you know this liquid film which is formed on the surface, it becomes unstable. And due to that, it, it breaks down into smaller fragments starting from ligament and then finally going all the way to spherical particles like what we have seen before also uh, while talking about the, the basic principle of the atomization process. So, here also the liquid uh, film first uh, breaks into uh, ligament and intermediate shape which finally uh, breaks down into uh, the spherical droplets uh, which will uh, solidify as the powder particles. Okay. So, here as I mentioned in the beginning itself uh, centrifugal force uh, is the main force responsible for uh, uh, breaking this uh, molten metal down into uh, smaller droplets. <coughs> Now, if you talk about uh, the type of uh, centrifugal atomizers, now that uh, we have understood uh, the basic of the process, we can see what kind of uh, equipment is used. So, as far as uh, the centrifugal uh, process or the centrifugal uh, atomizers or the equipment is concerned. There are two types, one is uh, rotating rod <coughs> and the other is rotating disc. So, uh, in the rotating uh, rod as I was mentioning before, uh, you know the 
material to be processed is in the form of a rod uh, which is uh, being fed uh, into a chamber uh, where it can be uh, melted at one end and then it is also rotated at a particular rpm and as a result of that uh, the centrifugal force is developed and the molten metal uh, breaks down into droplets okay so if you if you see the setup it looks uh, something like this this is a rotating rod setup and uh, the main uh, parts of this uh, are this uh, a feeding mechanism here uh, which can uh, feed this rod which has to be melted and of course you know you have this drive belt and the spindle uh, for uh, feeding and rotating this rod uh, which melts at this chamber. So, in this case uh, as you could see uh, it is done with the help of a tungsten electrode uh, that means here uh, we take the help of an electrical arc uh, to uh, melt this uh, rod which is being fed into this, uh, this end where the tungsten electrode is there and it is it is melted with the help of an electric arc. Okay. So, once uh, it is it is melted by the arc, it is simultaneously rotated and because of that rotation as we have seen before, uh, this uh, you know breaks down into the, the rod uh, breaks down into droplets. As you can see here that we have discussed just now. So, when the this if this is the rod when it rotates due to the centrifugal force uh, the molten rod is uh, the molten metal uh, is, is broken into uh, smaller droplets and that is how finally the powder particles are generated okay. and in order to feed this rod of course you have this you know motor and drive belt mechanism in this case to push this rod into this uh, device. So, the rod itself uh, is the one of the electrodes and the other electrode that means the cathode is, is, is the tungsten and the rod itself is the anode which is, which is being melted. Okay. So, once you uh, set up the arc uh, between this anode which is the rod and the tungsten cathode. <coughs> It will, it will melt and as you, as you rotate it uh, that molten metal will be uh, broken down into uh, fine droplets due to the centrifugal force. Okay. The next one is uh, the rotating disc which looks uh, something like, like this if you see uh, the uh, schematic of the atomizer or the equipment. Here in this case. Uh, you do not really you, you do not have a rod which is being melted right like how we have uh, seen for the uh, previous case. Here in this case in order to uh, generate this uh, centrifugal force a rotating disc is used. Okay. So, what is done is uh, the metal is uh, first melted uh, and then it is uh, fed into a, a crucible uh, like, like this uh, that you can see over here and from that uh, it is actually dropped into a disc which is uh, rotated at uh, very high speed. Okay. So, the disc as it rotates uh, you know it creates the centrifugal force uh, over the uh, molten metal which is uh, dropping or falling on this uh, rotating disc. Okay. So, the disc will be uh, rotated at uh, you know very high uh, rpm between 2000 uh, to uh, 3000 rpm in that range and as the molten metal falls into this uh, rotating disc it is subjected to a centrifugal force and the metal breaks down into droplets. Okay. And uh, 
as far as uh, uh, the, the powder particles are uh, concerned, in this case uh, the particles are uh, finer compared to the uh, previous method that means the rotating rod method. This is uh, because of the fact that the disc uh, provides uh, rapid cooling. Since it is kept at a, at a much lower temperature, the temperature of the surface of the disc is much lower compared to uh, the molten metal and as a result uh, when the uh, molten metal uh, comes in contact with the disc it immediately uh, cools down or you know uh, or subjected to a high cooling rate and due to that uh, the, the powder particles are uh, finer because uh, higher the cooling rate or finer will be the particle size and because of that, because of that uh, higher cooling effect, uh, the particles in this case uh, will be finer compared to the rotating rod method. Okay. Now, if you talk about the, the process variables, uh, which will have an effect on the particle size the particle size in this case can be expressed or can be correlated with the process parameters uh, uh, with, an, with an equation like this. where uh, d is the particle size <laughs> omega is the rpm or the angular velocity of the rotating material R is the electrode uh, radius rho m is density of liquid or liquid metal and A is a constant. Right. So, here we are talking about uh, the rotating rod method in particular because uh, in that case the rod itself is used as the electrode <coughs> which is being melted. Right. So, you can see uh, uh, apart from uh, the uh, size of the uh, rod, the other parameters uh, which will affect the particle size uh, are the angular velocity, uh, the density of the metal and also uh, the uh, surface energy gamma. Right. So, these are uh, the main uh, parameters or main process variables which, which will control uh, the particle size. And one more thing uh, that I should uh, mention here particularly with uh, regard to this uh, rpm or uh, the angular velocity that is <coughs> whether you will use a higher or 
lower RPM uh, depending on that uh, the mechanism of uh, formation of the droplets can change. Uh, for example, uh, if you are on the lower side that means low RPM and uh, also low melting rate. Then in that case the particles will form uh, directly at the anode lip. anode which is nothing but the rod itself, right. On the other hand, uh, if uh, the melting rate is high, then uh, it will go through an intermediate which is a ligament which will finally uh, convert into droplets. Right. So, in one case uh, for low RPM and uh, low melting rate the particles or the droplets will form uh, directly at the lip of the anode at the tip or at the lip of the rod and when the melting rate is high then first the ligaments will form as we have seen before <coughs> right these ligaments as as you can see from here those ligaments will form first as an intermediate and then uh, they will be converted to uh, the droplets. Okay. So, that is the effect of uh, the RPM or, or the melting rate on, on the, the mechanism of uh, formation of these droplets. Okay. Let us look at uh, some other attributes of this process and also see uh, what advantages uh, this process of uh, centrifugal atomization can offer. One of the main parameters as we have discussed, one of the main attributes of this process is the rotational speed <coughs> and it can be in the range of 1000 to 50,000 rpm. Just now we saw that uh, the melting rate also has an effect and in this case uh, the melting rate uh, typically is around 10 to the power minus 7 meter cube per second. And when you talk about uh, this uh, rotating rod method, uh, the anode diameter is typically 2 to 5 centimeter. Now, uh, let us also look at the advantages and the disadvantages of this uh, process. Advantages are uh, the powders are clean. they also have spherical shape which will uh, provide 
better packing density. and better flow. to the powder okay and other advantages are uniform particle size contamination is lower compared to other processes like for example, the water atomization process And uh, every process will have its own uh, disadvantages also. So, if you look at the disadvantages of uh, this process, uh, some of the limitations are like uh, low production rate. high equipment and process cost and since a, a tungsten cathode is used uh, there is a chance of uh, tungsten contamination from the cathode. Right. So, uh, these are some of the attributes of this uh, centrifugal atomization process and as we have seen uh, you know uh, this is a process uh, which can exercise uh, uh, better control on the particle size and as well as it can also handle a difficult to melt or difficult to uh, process metals okay so be before we uh, close today's class uh, let us quickly uh, summarize what we have discussed today as far as this uh, uh, centrifugal process is concerned. So, uh, centrifugal uh, atomization process as uh, uh, we have seen, uh, it is basically uh, uh, breaking down a, a molten metal uh, by the uh, centrifugal force which is uh, generated uh, through uh, the rotation and this rotation can be created. Uh, in the metal itself uh, you know which is being uh, processed or it can be additionally uh, created with the help of a disc on which uh, this uh, metal is being dropped. Okay. So, depending on that uh, there are uh, two types of uh, centrifugal atomizer one is the rotating rod where the rod itself is being melted and then <laughs> converted into uh, droplets and in other case it is a rotating disc where the metal is dropped on a rotating disc to break it down into droplets. Okay. And as far as uh, the mechanism is concerned uh, uh, due to this uh, uh, rotational force uh, due to this centrifugal force of rotation uh, first a thin film is uh, developed on the surface and when the uh, film becomes unstable uh, it, it breaks down into ligament and then uh, into into uh, finally into spherical particles and whether the uh, ligaments uh, will form as an intermediate or not that uh, depends on uh, certain uh, parameters for example 
uh, the rotational speed and the melting rate. Uh, when uh, the melting rate is low and the RPM is low, then the ligament does not form. The particles are generated directly uh, from the lip of the anode. And on the other hand, uh, when the uh, melting uh, rate is high, then the ligaments form which uh, finally uh, convert to droplets. Okay. And with that, uh, we will uh, finish today's class. Thank you for your attention.